it's going to be one long hot summer. In retaliation for grilling them on everything from Benghazi, the IRS, the NSA, of course the persecution of journalists as payback for the questioning of the failed implementation of Obamacare. As we discussed the other day, the DOJ has been colluding with protest groups to incite country-wide diversions to the problems plaguing this administration. The Community Relations Division within the DOJ was found by reports to be working with Trayvon Martin protesters to support and organize marches and protests. Now, the left simply says that this is just the DOJ trying to prevent some violence. So the left is finally admitting that they are, in fact, the violent ones. And also, why can't they explain why the Community Relations Division never actually met with Zimmerman supporters or the Zimmerman family? Now, last night, riots raged in Oakland, cities like New York, Los Angeles, even Newark, a number of cities. Protesters walked onto the highways to stop traffic. In L.A., police were put on tactical alert as protesters marched down Crenshaw, jumping on cars and chasing bystanders and throwing rocks. They stopped into a local Walmart to riot where, according to the L.A. Times, some of them tried to break open the jewelry glass displays. Right for Trayvon. And they assaulted a news crew. Here in this ruckus and a lot of commotion, big noise and people running everywhere. And so I'm like, what's going on? So I, when I came out the bathroom, I was like chaos and people were running. Riot for Trayvon. It's just like Gandhi said, you know, you should burn your neighborhood to the ground when justice is served and you do not approve. Real quote. And just like Abraham Lincoln said, you can't believe everything you read on the Internet. In Mississippi on Sunday, a white jogger was attacked and beaten while assailants screamed, this is for Trayvon. In Baltimore, a Hispanic man was chased, attacked, and beaten with multiple witnesses telling police that the perpetrator shouted, justice for Trayvon. In Oakland, police stood down as protesters terrorized drivers. Occupy Oakland appeared to help with the melee. In fact, Occupy groups popped up to assist in the chaos in every city where chaos was to be had. It's convenient. The machinations of the left are on display. Occupy wasn't simply about protesting Wall Street. It was about having an on-call group of chaos to stir up contention when and where needed. Observers say that this is the result of pent-up rage. All of it finally unleashed. What? I, mean, I kind of have a difficult time believing that a black president, a black DOJ, and black celebrities colluding to target an acquitted man make anyone in the black community disenfranchised. So let's look at the facts. Youth are the biggest target in Chicago. Black youth. In 2012, Chicago had 100 more murders than in New York City, 215 more than Los Angeles. And according to the Chicago Reporter and other statistics, from 2008 to 2012, half of Chicago's nearly 2,500 homicide victims were killed before they reached their 25th birthdays. In 2011, over half of the people who committed murder were under the age of 25. And according to the U.S. Census, a third of Chicago city residents are under 25 years of age. More young people are killed in Chicago than in any other city in America. You want even crazier statistics? More youth died in Chicago last year than in Afghanistan. 228 deaths versus 144. That's 228 Trayvon Martins in the span of just one year. So where are the riots? Where are the protests? I mean, yes, apparently they are just killing black teenagers out there, but who is they? According to the Bureau for Justice Statistics, anywhere from 8,000 to 9,000 black Americans are killed every year. And according to this same entity and FBI uniform crime reports, 93% of these murders are committed by other black Americans. That's more than the number of men and women we've lost after a decade of war in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, if all of these people out there protesting for Trayvon are so concerned about the death of a youth, then where have they been these past 10 years? 
I don't believe in magic. I don't simply believe that George Zimmerman has been in all of these places all at once and has killed over 8,000 black Americans every year. I just don't believe it. And are we to presuppose that even a quarter of those cases have received justice, even gone to trial? It's a farce. It's a distraction. And if people really cared about the loss of black youth, they would be asking what the hell is going on in their communities. They would be asking why black youth are dying at an epidemic rate. This violence is a symptom of a problem. A number of Chicago communities see half their residents living in poverty. Schools are failing. Econ economic opportunity is hard to find. The family unit has been all but obliterated. Now, these statistics are as equally depressing. But, you know, Chicago is just the progressive utopian dream, right? This is President Obama's backyard. You have to ask why, with the first black president, are black Americans, one of the demographics, along with women, so adversely affected by his policies? Why is dependence upon government assistance at an all-time high? Oh, I see change, but there's no hope to be found. And why does it take a white girl with American Indian ancestry asking these questions? Why is this not a topic of analysis on BET or One News or with Al Sharpton? That's the question we should be asking. You know, there are some amazing leaders in the black community, and they're asking this too. But all too often, they're drowned out by the outrage queens assisting the administration in the construction of a diversion to the problems plaguing it.